Okay, let me get it. Uh, praise God, that's a... Uh, tonight amen this is a uh, it's going to answer a lot of questions for people on the internet and even all over the world because god says it amen not me god said it and when he says it i believe it don't you that's one thing about us pentecostal folks we believe it from the front to the back all of it amen And those Pentecostal folks believe in the Trinity, by the way. I was reading an article here the other day or yesterday about said that they didn't, charismatics. But we believe in God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. Amen, always. Some of these people, uh, you got to watch people, you know. You got people out there on the Internet, stuff like that. They'll tell lies, you know. And uh, their father, the liar, the devil, got to be truth all the way or get out amen <laughs> you got to make that decision i'm going to do it all the way or, or what you know i got a uh, i got something the lord laid on my heart i've been studying and preparing for this in a while too but i've got it loaded i've got a lot of stuff so if you want to write some of the scriptures down write them down if not so uh, but it's going to talking about returning to sin. A lot of people in the world have returned to sin. A lot of people in the world have uh, not decided to follow Jesus. They come into Jesus, they love Jesus, and all of a sudden the cares of the world uh, steal the word and they go back out into the world. It happens all the time. And I'm going to tell you right now, also for Christians, uh, temptation is out there all around us, and we got to be strong in the Lord. Amen. Because, uh, and the power of his might, amen. But what happened to a lot of backsliders, they quit obeying God and he turned back to sin. And when they do, they, they've lost it. Like one of my brothers told me one time, he said, Brother Rick said, I lost it. I got back out in the world. And I had to go all the way back to the cross. My brother's talking about the cross a while ago. The blood and the cross, I tell you, and the virgin birth, without these uh, basic fundamental things in God's holy word, uh, they own a, a, a bad ground, amen? So you got to stay on that. But we're going to look and see what God says. And I want to tell you something. A lot of people's out there, other denominations, I'm just going to tell other denominations what I read in my Bible. And it talks about, you know, some people believe once saved, always saved. That is not so. I do not believe it, and I'm going to show you in God's Word, it is not so. And I'll tell you this, if it's once saved, always saved, you could go get saved when you're a young person and live like hell, couldn't you? What kind of salvation would that be? Amen? What Would that be fair to the real people that try to live a holy life for God? No, it would not. And they'll say, oh, well, they didn't truly get saved. Well, I'm going to show you some folks in this Bible that truly was saved, anointed of God, working for God, and they fell back on God. Now, what do you call that? Why do you think God would say, I'll take their name out of the book uh, if your name's put in the book and it can't be taken out? Amen? Let's look in, and, and look at the scriptures, and i got some good stuff right here, and we'll get into some of it, you know. Uh, the worlds and the cares of the world is just going right along, and uh, the devil's carrying a lot of people to hell. They think uh, their grandmother prayed for them when they was young, and they think they saved and everything's okay. That's a lie from hell. And uh, they think they was on fire for the Lord, you know, years ago, and everything's okay. They're out there drinking fornication and doing all those things of hell, and they think they're going to heaven. That's a lie from Satan. You're going to be accountable responsible for sin. If it ain't repented, you're going to go to hell and burn. I'm telling the folks on the Internet, I hope you just uh, drop me a little note here because I'm going to show you what God said, not this pastor. And I, I like it. Amen. I love it when you get in this. You know, a fool returns to sin. And this is first scripture right here is really, uh, it's, it's, it's a gross out, but that's the way it is. When you get saved and on fire for the Lord and you return back to your vomit like a dog, that's sick, ain't it? As a dog returneth to his vomit. You ever seen a dog throw up and run back and lick it back up? Oh, that's a gross. But this is in the Proverbs and this is the Word of God. 
It says in 2611, the King James Version, as a dog returneth to his vomit, so a fool returneth to his follies. I'm here to tell you right now, those people that uh, come in and want to live for the Lord and then go back out in the world and live like hell and then come back in and live the Lord, finally uh, the devil's going to get a hold of them and take them back into a sinful nature. That's the bottom line. I'm telling you right now, temptation is out there. We see that in Luke 8, 13. Fornication is a big one the devil used out there. We can see that in 1 Corinthians 10, 8. And uh, they fall from grace. There is no uh, unconditional grace without uh, certain factors that goes with it. Amen. I'm here to tell you, listen, unbelief. They get into unbelief and go back in the world. They don't believe it, okay? There's tons of people out there right now that does not believe the Word of God. They get, they get unbelief in them, and the devil carries them right off. Now, let's go right here in 2 Peter. Y'all see that Proverbs 26, 11? Let's go in 2 Peter, and we're going to get into it. I'm going to give you some examples in God's Word that people were saved and where they at today. Good ones, I'm telling you. Look here. But it is happening unto them, according to the true proverb, the dog is turned to his own vomit again, and the sow that was washed to her wallowing in the mar. You and I. And the people that come to God are washed in the blood. But when they go back out into sin, they get like that sow that gets in that mud. You ever seen a hog do that? I have. And they get back in that mud and they are filthy. Well, I'm telling you right now, when you go back in your sins, you are filthy like that hog. That's how bad it is. But thank God Almighty, he saved us. He cleansed us up. He made us uh, white as snow. Y'all hear it? I tell you right now, and whatsoever man sows, he's going to reap it. You can't get away with God. I'm telling you right now, God knows everything that you do, everything that goes on you, he knows your heart. He knows it. Amen? So let's go a little bit further right here. We're talking about uh, backsliders going back to sin is what uh, this scripture is talking about here. And I'm just giving you some scriptures right now. Right now. I want you to... Uh, you know, I, as I was reading and studying this messages over the week or so here, I noticed time and time again you'd say, I'd see certain scriptures say, those who endure to the end, those who endure to the end. We got to endure to the end, haven't we? Amen? Now let's look right here in God's holy word and see what it says. Twenty uh, Matthew 24, 12, and 13. Let's go and look right here and see what God says. And because inequity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Is that what's happening in our world today? Is that what's happening in America? America wants to do away with God and don't remember God and move forward in the devil's direction. But I'm telling you right now, Christians and strong Christians are holding on to God Almighty. We're holding on because he tells us to. He tells us to endure till then. I don't care what's happening out there in the world. We're not compromising. We believe this word from the front to the back. Hallelujah. Praise God. And he said, obey it and follow it, and you'll reap the rewards of eternal life with him. But if you don't, you won't. And by the way, some of the skeptics out there and some of the different religions out there has made their own religions and cults and stuff. Uh, you can't tire hell out of the Bible. It's in there. Amen. The cross is in there. The blood is in there. The virgin birth is in there. It's all in there. God wrote this word by inspiration of God to holy men. Amen. This is God's mind. Just get in there and read it. Think about it. I love it. Endure to the end. Look at here. Because inequity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Are we seeing that out there? Are we seeing sin like never before? I was talking to somebody in the last day or two. Some of these guys, I think, that worked and put this projector up. We was up here about a day or two, and they was putting it up, and I got to witness and testify and talk to every one of them. Some of them thinking about coming to church. Anymore. But I'm here to tell you right now, you know, people are getting harder and harder out there. Sin is getting rampant and un godliness like we can never imagine in our lifetime well the bible tells us it's going to happen god says it's going to happen he said it's going to be like noel's day you know what god he got so upset with the with the with the humanity in noel's day noel found favor in the eyes of the lord and noel uh, and his family was saved because they trusted god and they endured 
Now, can you imagine 125 years building an ark and enduring to the people that's going to be ridiculing them and persecuting and coming and laughing at them? They didn't laugh when God closed the door and they couldn't get in the boat, though, huh? You know, I'd rather be in the boat and outside the boat, hadn't you? Amen. And we inside the boat, y'all, because we have him in our heart and we follow him. Look at this other scripture. But he shall, but he that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. That's point blank, ain't it? There's that scripture. You can go in God's word and you'll see these scriptures. And you'll see these scriptures about taking, uh, he'll, God said he'll take your name out of the book. Uh, if you mess up, think about it. But if you mess up, God give us mercy and grace. You get on your knees and ask God and repent sincerely with your heart and you'll see that. Amen. Let's go a little bit further right here. And uh, before I get to some of the, so, some good examples right here, 10, 22, it talks about, what did I say? I said in Matthew 24 with 10, 22, let's see what it says. You shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. Is a Christian being hated now than ever before? Yes. If you speak the name of Jesus, you mud. But you can talk about all these other ungodly gods created by man in humanity, and it's okay. But you don't talk about Jesus because they can't stand it. They have to cringe. You know, we went to, to that play the other day at Death's Door. Y'all remember that? Y'all remember that old devil come out there, and when Jesus would speak, the devil would shun down and run away. Well, that's the way he's doing when you as a Christian and the power of God that's in you, you speak the name of Jesus, them demons run. Amen? Because you got power and God give it to us. And the Bible says right here, you shall be hated of many men for my name's sake, but he that endures to the end shall be saved. I don't care how bad it gets or what's going on out there in the world around us in our community. We got to endure to the end. We got to stand. You got to make up your mind. If they come in here and say, hey, if you'll deny your faith, uh, you can leave. But if you don't deny your faith, we're going to kill you. I'm going to say, shoot, baby, in amazing grace. God, I praise you and I worship you. Pull the trigger. I'm going to heaven. Can you say that? Are you ready and prepared for that? Because it could be coming. But I still say Christians are going to not be a here for the wrath, I still say God said we're not accounted to wrath. We're going to be raptured out here for the great tribulation. And I believe it's all this is coming at the door right now. I truly believe it. Let's look right here and talk about fallen from grace in Jude 5. The Word of God says, And I will therefore put in you remembrance. <clears throat> Thou ye once knew this, how that the Lord having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, Afterward, destroyed them that believed not. Did they fall from grace? They did, didn't they? They fell from grace. Why? Because, just look at this. Man, you're talking about an example. God saved them, Hebrew children, brought them across the Red Sea. He seen Pharaoh's to army totally destroyed. They did, and they turned on God. They even went to Aaron and made him make them a golden calf that they could worship. And God destroyed them, too. Moses come back down off of that mountain and about 3,000 of them was, was killed and destroyed because they decided to follow the devil, not God. Amen? Now, we've got some good scriptures here. We see uh, where these people love the Lord and they fell from grace. Uh, those uh, Hebrew Egyptians that decided to go back to that ungodly gods that they uh, was in in, G in Egypt. Now, look at here. I'm going to give you some examples of God's holy word. You might want to write some of these scriptures down. And the first one I love to use, especially with those people that thinks once saved, always saved, was Lucifer the most beautiful angel in heaven? Was he created sinless? Yes, he was. Was he in heaven loving the Lord and praising God? Yes, he was. But he failed. He turned on God. He rebelled. Pride, lust of the eyes, and lust of the flesh took him to a place going to be called hell, eternity. Was Lucifer up there? Did he fall from grace? That's a good example, isn't it? I'm telling you. The Word of God talks about it in Matthew 25, 41, if you want to confirm that. You can write that down and confirm it this week when you go through these examples, okay? Now let's look at another one. What about O Aaron? Aaron was Moses' brother. Did you know that? Aaron was the one that held that rod up and the rod that budded and all that, you know. He was the one that held it up. Well, let me tell you, Aaron seen all of that. He helped Moses and God as they went through all of those plagues. 
in Egypt and all of that. I can't believe Aaron would do such a thing. And Moses went up on that Mount Sinai to get the Ten Commandments, okay? He's up there 40 days. And the people start to whining and complaining. Can you imagine that? They started whining and complaining. But guess what happened? Whining and complaining. Build us a, a golden calf, Aaron. Aaron ought to have enough sense not to build a golden calf. How dumb can you get? That's stupid. After all he's seen happen, Moses come back down on Mount Sinai and had them Ten Commandments, and he was mad. God told him the people was reveling down there, and he threw them Ten Commandments that God wrote on stone at him. Busted that golden calf and tore it up and throwed it in the river, melted it and, and ground it up and throwed it in the river. Now, I want to tell you something. Did you know what Moses did for his brother? You think he deserved it? You think Aaron deserved mercy and grace? After what he done, after what he seen God do, that gets with me. But I'm here to tell you, Moses interceded for his brother Aaron and cried out for Aaron, and God forgave Aaron. Can you imagine that? Now, you see the difference? Uh, his name was taken out of the book. Y'all see that? And his name was put back in the book because he was the priest for about 35, 38 years after he'd done that. The Levi, the priest, and his son. Did you know? That's awesome. Think about that, ain't it? We serve a God with mercy and grace, don't we? But I'm going to look at some of it. Now, Satan didn't get that mercy and grace because he's hard-hearted. He thinks he's bigger than God. Man, he don't know what's coming. His, he knows what's coming. His. When Jesus come out of that tomb, he knew that it was it, baby. Now, that's a, two good examples. Let's look at King Saul. And I ain't going to go to it. I'm going to tell you to write it down. You go to it this week. In 1 Samuel 10, 13. And in 1 Samuel 16, 12 through 23, King Saul, the Bible says he was anointed of God. He was the first king of Israel. They got to whining. They didn't want the judges anymore. They wanted a king like other countries and nations. And so God said, okay, Nathan, we'll, we'll Samuel, we'll get him a, a Samuel, we'll get him a, a king. And his name's going to be Saul. He was a big, robust-looking guy, looked like a king probably, you know. And so they chose Saul. But let me tell you what. And the Bible says that God anointed Saul. You know what I'm talking about? And his old Saul got bad and went in bad ways, and King David come on the line, and, and uh, 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 we see where King David's going to be the king because Saul started doing bad things and evil things, and he wasn't serving the Lord the way he should. And uh, he was going to go to battle. And uh, <clears throat> he went to battle and stood asking God. He asked a witch. Is he going to win the battle? You think that witch told him the truth? You believe he did? All you people going to Halloween tomorrow night, that's of hell. I pray it rains them out. But I want to tell you something. <clears throat> Old Saul, you know, he got to doing bad and everything. He was anointing to God. And he got to doing bad things and everything. He asked the witch, am I going to win that battle? And the witch said, yeah, you're going to win it, baby. Everything's okay. She is lying from her one she follows the devil she lied old Saul went out there with his son Jonathan and they got killed but you know what happened to Saul the Bible says in uh, you read it in the scriptures that God took the anointing so that tells me he was anointed saved he was ready to go to heaven when he first started out and he was in the book but the Bible says God took the anointing so that tells me God his name wrote out don't it to you now I want to tell you this one other thing he did which is against God he took his own life. He fell on a sword. He got some of his men. He didn't want to be killed and persecuted around with the enemy because they was winning the battle. His son got killed in that battle. That was David's friend, Jonathan. But he took his own life. And that's a sin against God, isn't it? It is the way I read my Bible. Now let's go a little bit further. And that's a pretty good example, don't you think? Y'all writing these down? I'm going to give you some more. Now, I'm going to give you, we talked about Aaron. God had mercy on Aaron, didn't he? Let's look at King David. King David was a man of God, and, and, and God uh, just loved King David, put him up there to be king. And old King David got to messing around, wasn't going out there fighting like he was supposed to be doing. Man, he was a man of valor, a fighter. He had so much blood on his hand. Man, he is some kind of dude. He's like 
He's better than Audie Murphy. Audie Murphy is one of the most uh, uh, decorated soldiers that they had. Do you know that? In World War II, Audie, Mo Audie Murphy got the Medal of Honor and everything else that goes with it. This guy's real. Good cowboy, too. I like him. <laughs> but I want to tell you, let's go right here <clears throat> and let's look. <clears throat> King David got to looking at Bathsheba down there, and he liked what he'd seen. He brought her up there. He committed adultery with her, and her husband was out there fighting for King David, his best friend. And uh, so uh, King David tried to bring him in and talk with him and get him to go be with his wife because his wife was pregnant by King David. King David committed adultery. He was a man of God. He could have had any woman he wanted legally, pretty much so, because he was the king. But he got into an adulterous affair, and he got caught, didn't he? That's what's happened to these people out here doing abor abortion. They're going out there and committing adultery, uh, the majority of them, and then they want to go cover up the sin and kill the baby. That's not a God. That's a sin. But God's a God that forgives. I preached in a prison a lot of time, and I know some of the women, when I preached in a women's prison, had uh, committed that and shame on the man. He was a part of it too. And I know that God touched those women because they cried out to God and said, forgive me. Did King David cry out to God and say, forgive me? You know what happened? He had blood on his hands. He sent uh, his best buddy out there and told the leader to put him on the front line so he would be killed. That was murder. So he had blood on his hands. He had adulterous affair here. Man, he was in a bad way. Nathan the prophet come and told David about a man doing something like that. And old King David got mad and said, this man needs to put to be put to death. And Nathan the prophet said, you're that man. And old King David fell on his knees, though he had enough sense to fall on his knees and cry out to God, forgive me, forgive me. And God had mercy on him, and God forgave him. But the sword did not leave his house on account of it. But old King David, praise God, I can't wait to talk with him, fellowship with him. He's going to help rule and reign down here on this earth for eternity. you know that? He's in one of the, the chain of command. He's in there. Why? God gave him mercy and grace in that situation. But now we look back up here at Lucifer. He didn't get that. Amen. I want to show you some more. Let's look at Judas. Judas was chosen by Jesus, our Lord. And he's the only one, Betty. Or, or Sandra, one of you telling me when we seen that uh, about the movie about the, uh, the Galilean wedding. That's an awesome movie. You need to see that movie. He's the only one that wasn't a Galilean. Somebody's telling me that. But I read, and read that when I was studying this the other day, too. But Judas was a thief. He was all the above. He was evil. God chose him, oh, God gave him anointing. He went out there and preached just like the other one's done. But the de devil come and tempted him and sifted him and got in him, and he failed, didn't he? He sold our Lord for 30 pieces of silver, y'all. He did. And you know what? He went out and killed himself, and the devil ripped his bowels out, and all kind of things went on there. But, you know, he went out and cried. He was sorry. He wasn't sorry for the Lord or none of that. He's sorry he got caught. You know, he didn't repent and come back to God. Because if he had of, God would probably gave him mercy. But he didn't. But let me tell you, he did all the, he was doing miracles. You can see it in the book of Acts 125. Write it down. And you can see it in Psalms 41, 9. And you can see it in Matthew 26, 24. Y'all want to write them down? I'll give them to you again. Acts 125. Read about Jesus, Judas. Psalms 41, 9, read about him. Matthew 26, 24. Judas was one of God's one of our Lord Jesus' disciples, went out and done the works uh, the other disciples did, but he failed God. He, his name was taken out of the book. He didn't make it, y'all. Is that another good example? Let's give you another. Demas. Well, let's go back up here to uh, Ananias and Sapphire. They were believers, and they went with old Paul and Peter and all of them doing all kind of good things. And we see in the book of Acts 5, 1 through 14, write that down. Acts 5, 1 through 14, talked about Ananias and Sapphire. 
they lied to the Holy Ghost. And when they lied to the Holy Ghost, uh, the Holy Ghost knocked Ananias down and killed him dead on the spot. And the men come in, told him away. And his wife, Sapphire, come in there the same. And the, 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 uh, the, 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 our brother disciple told him, said, the same ones that carried your husband off is here. They're going to carry you off. And she died and fell dead. Can you imagine what that done to the faith and the spirit put in those people that following God? He's God. Amen. He's God. Y'all see that? They were believers, y'all. Let's go a little bit further. Damus. Damus in 2 Timothy. He ministered and he was uh, uh, one of the disciples doing stuff in 2 Timothy 4.10. You can read and see about Damus how he was doing the work for the Lord and he turned on God and went away. Didn't come back either, y'all. Now I'm going to give you another good one right here. How about the holy angels? Did you know God made all angels? They're all sinless. Did you know that? They're all sinless. Did you know that devil who was a deceiver deceived a bunch of the, the angels that was down here helping him on his earth? He deceived one-third of God's angels. Man, he had a, a, a ratchet jaw, didn't he? Boy, they chose poorly, didn't they? They chose poorly. But the Bible says, write it down, Matthew 8, 29, talked about the demons. They were created sinless. But I'm here to tell you right now, a third of them fail, y'all. Let's go a little bit further. I'm going to tell you another example right here, and we'll move on a little section over here. Adam and Eve, did they mess up? Why do you think the curse is upon this land, y'all? Why do you think that Adam and Eve messed up? Adam should have been protecting his wife Eve, and he didn't. She ate the apple, and and, he, and Adam ate it too, and they brought sin, the curse, upon this world again. Think about that, y'all. And I don't see no one. The only uh, uh, man of God again after Adam and Eve sinned, I don't see none until Abel. Abel was a man of God. And he got killed for it. Did you know that? But he's in heaven. Cain is the one got cursed on that one. Do y'all see these examples we just talked about? And there's more in there. This is, this is some right here. Lucifer, I think, is an extra one right there. He was saved up there with the Lord and sinless. He was having a good time, wasn't he? And he turned on God and God threw him out, didn't he? Amen. King Saul, Judas, Ananias, and Sapphire. Demas and holy angels and uh, Adam and Eve. That's a, enough examples to tell me that there ain't no such thing as once saved, always saved. My Bible tells me as I read and studied God's word, those who endure to the end. That means you got to hold on, baby. When you leave this house today, if you go out there and dabble in sin, you're going to suffer the consequences. It's going to catch you. It's going to get you. You'll either be right or, want, or you won't. I'm telling you, God's an awesome God that we serve. Now, I want to tell you, what causes some of the backsliding? We will not obey God's commandments. Did he say obey his commandments? Yes, he did. We see that in Leviticus uh, 26, 14. Turn back to sin. A lot of times you'll see people get on fire for the Lord and the cares of the world gets them, and they're right back out there in the world again. Temptations in Luke 8, 13. There is temptations out there, and guess what? The, nev the devil knows exactly what you tempted of, whether it's sex, money, whatever it might be, he knows where your weakness is. So you better be strong in the Lord. You better put on the full armor of God what you better do because he will come and tempt. And he's good at it. He's been doing it for thousands of years, amen. Man's on, the generation we're in now is only here for what, 80, 85 years, maybe 100 years, somewhere around there. But he's had thousands of years to learn how man operates, huh? You ever thought about that? But greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. And the first thing he don't want, he don't want you to get saved or on fire for the Lord because he knows he's got some trouble when it happens. Amen? Think about it. Fornication, that's one of the biggest ones that Satan uses. Uh, he gets men and women out there that want to lonely or whatever, and they get into fornication, and they sin against God. It's a, it's a big one out there. Temptation the devil puts out there. And they fall from grace. Unbelief. And I'm going to tell you this last one right here. In Deuteronomy 8, 1, 
and I put USA under that. That's the United States of America, the great country of the United States of America. Praise God. I was born in it, and I love it, and I fought for it. Amen? And our forefathers have fought for it. And by their shed blood, you have the liberty and freedom you have in here tonight. I want to give you this scripture right here, Deuteronomy 8.1. What is one of the ways that they fall and backslide? They forget God. Are they forgetting God in the White House? They try to take God and the Ten Commandments and everything out of the White House. They don't want to pray before they go into some of the awesome meetings that would be controlling and doing the things that would help America. They're not doing the godly things. They're being led by the devil of hell. They forget God. The worlds are forgetting God. Amen. It's bad, isn't it? But that's okay. I want you all to be encouraged tonight. Because our Lord Jesus Christ, he said, those who endure to the end. And God said, it's your will. He will not go against your will. If you decide to go to hell, you can go. If you decide to go to heaven, you can go too. Amen. He has given us that free choice and free will. And I tell you right now, make the right decisions. And most of us in here, all of us I say is Christians and loving the Lord. But I'm speaking to the people on the internet. I pray you'll get a hold of God and this message. Every head bowed, please. Lord, we love you so much, and we praise you for your holy word. Thank you, God, we could uh, was able to deliver this message tonight uh, of the people of the world that come into your goodness and they return back to sin. I pray you'll have mercy on them. I pray you'll put them under conviction. I pray they will return, return back to you. And I pray you'll give every one of us that's represented in here tonight the strength and the power of your might from your son Jesus to endure to the end. And I thank you for that, God. And I pray, God, you'll bless each and every one that's in here tonight in a special way, Lord, in a special way. And be with us this week. And God, be with our sister Sue, Lord. I lift her up to you in the family right now, God, in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen, amen. Praise God. Did you learn anything tonight? Amen.